Welcome to this week's edition of The Blitz. We will have cornerbacks coach Daryl Perkins on the show today, along with redshirt senior defensive end Jesse Joseph. We will look back at our last game against Central Florida and preview our Friday night matchup against Louisville. So thanks for tuning in, and now, The Blitz. Well, Sean Mulcahy is a little bit under the weather today, so we have Joe D back with us filling in. Thanks for coming back to the show. Nice to be the Blitz's biggest pinch hitter. <laughs> we love having you here. Now the Huskies are coming off that 62-17 loss to Central Florida. We saw the Knights' true athleticism and why they really are a top 25 team. What is your assessment of that game? You know, Emily, it's funny. Their speed does not translate when you watch them on television or on film. It's a very talented team. Blake Bortles, the quarterback, is terrific. Uh, Storm Johnson didn't really do much the running back coming off his big game against Louisville, but he didn't have to. Uh, they threw the ball at will. The thing that, that struck me in the broadcast booth, other than the fact that it was 80 degrees and beautiful, was that they made so many yards after the catch. The Huskies had a terrible day tackling them, and some long games should have been short games or intermediate gains, but because of the poor tackling, UCF was able to make big plays, and really, the game wasn't real competitive. And you mentioned their quarterback, Blake Bortles, who just had an unbelievable game. He was 20 for 24 and threw for 286 yards just in that first half and the next drive um, in that second half there. And Storm Johnson, the same, only played mostly in that first half. How potent was that offense, and why were we just not able to, to slow them down? Well, first off, and it's been a theme, unfortunately, all year for UConn, didn't get any pass rush. And if you give a guy like Bortles time to throw, his receivers are good enough that they're going to get open. They have tall guys. They have fast guys. The tight end can catch the ball. Johnson can catch the ball out of the backfield. Without putting a pass rush on, Bortles was able to do what he wanted. And then on the one touchdown run, he got outside containment. He got around Graham Stewart, who was blitzing on the play. Yawin Smallwood couldn't cut off the mm -hmm. angle, and Bortles ran in the end zone. When you have a quarterback like that, who UConn is going to see this week in Bridgewater, which we'll get to later, a dual-threat quarterback makes things awful difficult for a defense. And on our offensive end, we did see a bit of a struggle. Freshman quarterback Tim Boyle couldn't quite make those connections with the receivers like I know that they wanted to. But we did see another true freshman, uh, Brian Lamel, rack up 81 yards, and he had that 46-yard touchdown. What was your take of our offense this weekend? Really struggled, as you said. Again, didn't run the ball well, other than Lyle's 57-yard run on the third play from scrimmage. I think. Um, Tim seemed to, to throw the ball high. Um, they got a little bit of pressure on him, but his throws were off. And then after he got hurt in the second quarter, they were off even more. I thought Casey Cochran against the twos played well. Certainly we saw the speed of Brian Lamell. He flashes over the middle, catches the ball, and takes off. I would think we'll see a lot more of Brian Lamell over the last five games of the regular season. I think he's a threat offensively because of his legs. And again, you know, it, 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 in a season like this, uh, and when you're trying to, to make the most out of it, when you can develop a guy, if Lamel can develop over the last five games, that's a big advantage going into next year. And we did have this bye weekend off for a little bit more development for everyone, some time to rest for some of those injuries that you mentioned. When you have the season going the way that it is for the Huskies, what do you hope a bye week can do at this point in the season? Well, I think the one thing is not break a team apart. You know, when you're 0-7 and you have a week off and you've just come off two games where you've lost 41-16 to and 62 to 17. You really worry about the about the, the mental makeup, but I think the leadership on this team amongst the players is strong enough mm -hmm. so that that's not an issue. Um, T.J. Wiest in his uh, weekly press conference talked about the fact that they want to be more physical, that they want to compete more, and that they did those sort of things, and obviously the tackling. The tackling has to be better this Friday night against Louisville, or things will get out of hand. All right, Joe, thanks for that insight. We'll check back in with you a little All bit right, later. Looking forward to it, Emily. All right, now let's take a look back at highlights from UConn versus Central Florida.
time now for Coach's Corner with cornerbacks coach Dale Perkins. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. A pleasure to be here. All right, now it's been a little bit of a rough season for the Huskies so far. Can you talk about what you do with your unit in order to make sure that these guys are continuing to push forward when it, it seems like the Huskies just can't catch a break this season? Yeah, the first thing I do, I just, I just try to remain positive and, and, and stay positive the, the whole way through. Uh, you're trying to instill confidence in them and you just try to remind them of the good things that they've done and you try to build on those so even when you're losing that doesn't mean that everybody's you know doing everything wrong there's still bright spots in there you try to focus on those you try to build on those and and then hopefully they can get on track and you have a really young group of cornerbacks there you've got byron jones who's the junior leader there but this is his first season as a cornerback, and then senior Taylor Mack, who's been out with that stinger since the Buffalo game. What kind of challenges have you found coaching such a young group of cornerbacks? Well, you you got to remain patient, you know, and and with everything that that's been going on, that's that's been hard to do. <laughs> but you remain patient. Uh, you want to have uh, just a good attitude about everything that's going on and the situation, and about them, and just you just try to keep encouraging them, and then. Because they're a young group, you're trying to you're trying to learn the best way to work with each uh, one of them. Their experiences are, are different, mm -hmm. and so uh, when you do that, uh, it, it makes it challenging. But uh, but they're learning, they're growing, they're they're focused, you know, and they work hard every day. So I enjoy working with them. And you do have a really good group of guys there. Um, a lot of really good kids in that group there. What do you enjoy most about working with them? What kind of fun do you get to have with them? Well, they're they're unique. They got some. They've got some uh, very unique personalities. I mean, uh, Byron, he may, he's he's very mature, and at times you might think he's quiet, but but he's he's quite. He you know he he met, he jokes around quite a bit. So the guys are always telling me things that he does. <laughs> but um, but they're all really good. Each of them, they've got their own little little things that they do, and they and they let each other know about that. But but that. But that makes for a close group. So They definitely are a really great group of guys. We do love those cornerbacks. Now let's look ahead to the next game. We're going to be taking on a 7-1 and one Louisville team, a very good team. After breaking down the film of their season so far, what can you tell us about this game? Well, they're, very, uh, they're a confident football team. Uh, that they're, a, uh, they're a team. They're an offense that, that really builds off of uh, Teddy Bridgewater. As he goes, so does Louisville. They're not complex. You know, offensively, they uh, they're very sound in what they do. Mm -hmm. They've got they've got good players, so you've got to try and and match great fundamentals and techniques with you know against their offense or and and that's going to be the uh, the key you know to us being successful. Also. And the last time that the Huskies came out under the lights was against Michigan, and we saw them really step up and put on quite a show against a very good Michigan team. How much does that energy and excitement help you guys fuel up for a big game? I think it, it, it helps. Um, it helps the guys see that this is a team that obviously that, that, that we can beat. A lot of players that were on the field last year uh, that helped us you know, in, in that game and played a big role are still here, so that, that helps a lot. Um, but really once that once that ball is kicked off it's it's really about this year here it's about these players and us getting uh you know mentally prepared us coming out with the right uh, focus intensity and toughness you know to, to get the victory so it helps a little bit but you know we can't we can't just rely on that well i know we are all really excited to see this game under the lights and and see you guys take on louisville so thanks so much for being on the show today Perk. pleasure being here and, and and uh, we look forward to, to a Friday night as well. Okay. All right, now let's head out to campus for a little Know Your Foe. For this week's edition of Know Your Foe, we are here in the XL Center in Hartford before the men's basketball game to find out how much Husky fans know about our next opponent, the Louisville Cardinals. Who is UConn football playing this weekend? Uh, Louisville. 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 Uh, Louisville. Playing Louisville. What is their mascot? The Cardinals. The Cardinals. No idea. <laughs> uh, okay, it's a kind of bird. I really don't know. It's a red bird. <laughs> Louisville Cardinals. A uh, cardinal? Yeah, yeah, cardinal. Do you know the name of their mascot? I don't. I mean, it's Louisville. I, I'm more of a Yukon guy. Louis? Yeah. If you had to take a guess based on what their name is, what would you guess? I'd guess Louis. Yeah. 
Oh my goodness. It's actually Louis, but that's pretty close. Okay, I'll take that. If I had to guess, I'd say David. No clue. The Cardinals. Louis. Yeah. All right. Louis. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Louis. Louis. Lou. I like Lou. It's Louis the Cardinal, but I like Lou. What are their colors? Red and white. Red, white, and black. Just red and black, but we'll give you that one. Uh, red and black. Red and black. Yeah. Red, black, and white. The, oh, red and black, white. What conference are they in? They're in the American Athletic Conference. The ACC? Our conference? Yes. Okay. Do you know what that is? The American Athletic Conference. Wait. AAC. What state is Louisville in? Oh, Kentucky. Louisville. Oh, you're going to make me look like an idiot. <laughs> Kentucky. Kentucky. That's really sad that I don't know that. Louisville is on that border of Kentucky. What other state does it border? Uh, Tennessee. No, it's the upper side of Kentucky. So, Ohio. Uh, over just a little bit. Oh, my God. Indiana? Yeah. Third time's a charm, right? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I couldn't tell you that. <laughs> I'm really bad it's, at geography. Can you name their starting quarterback? Bridgewater. You know, I can't. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Ted, Teddy? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Covered Bridge. Do you know what happened the last time UConn football and Louisville football played? We beat them in triple overtime. UConn won? Three overtimes. Now it's coming back to me. They won. Sure. They won in three overtimes. Well, thank you for being a part of this. You're a great sport. <laughs> We have redshirt senior defensive end Jesse Joseph on the show with us now. Thanks for being here today, Jesse. It's, been, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. All right, now you've been a part of the UConn football team for what seems like much more than five years now. You're 25 years old, the oldest guy on this team. Do you catch a lot of slack for being uh, the old guy on the team? I do. I do. I never hear anything else besides <laughs> Uncle Jesse this, Uncle Jesse that. So, I mean, it can get annoying, but... I have been here for a while, so I accept it. Hey, the guys look up to you. They That's do. all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Now, I know it's been a tough way for the season to go for you, especially this being your last year. But what do you, as an experienced guy, do to make sure that there's still a fight in this team? You really just got to keep everyone together. You can't have everybody going their own way. It's just like Coach says, everybody has to be all in. Mm -hmm. And we still got to keep fighting as if, as if the season just started. So we can't keep thinking negative about ourselves or let things get to us. We just got to keep playing football. Really. And this weekend we're back home to take on Louisville on Friday night. I know we don't need to remind anyone about the way that that game went last year. Three overtime wins. Your defense put a beating on yeah. Teddy Bridgewater last year. I know you didn't get to play because you were injured at that game, but how ready are you for to get, to get one last crack at that really talented quarterback and his team? I think I'm pretty much ready. Yeah, same as everybody else. We've just been watching film on how we played last year and we just need to come in with that same mentality just to get after the quarterback and not let him get up really just hurt him as much as we can really so and he'll be playing louisville under the lights on a friday night you guys have stepped up for some big games in the past we saw you take on michigan and a team that you guys weren't supposed to be able to compete against and you did you came up huge um, is there a difference for you guys getting ready for big games under the lights uh, on national television i mean it really shouldn't be a difference, but I guess it is. A lot of people get more a sense of more urgency, mm -hmm. or like they take it more important. I guess when when they know that we're the only game on TV and they, all eyes are on us, so a lot of guys take that into account. All right, Jesse. Well, we know that you're used to putting pressure on quarterbacks, but we're going to put the pressure on you here in a game that we like to call three and out. All right, how it works is I will ask you three questions about yourself, and you give me the first thing that comes to mind, and then we'll do it again, three and out, about your teammates. You ready? <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, Good. question number one. We just had Halloween. What is your favorite candy? Snickers. Well, that was an easy question for you? Uh, no, I just love Snickers candy bars. Yeah, it was pretty easy. Okay. Uh, if you could vacation anywhere in the world, where would you go? Uh, Puerto Rico, I guess. 
Okay. I mean, I just always want to go there, and I know a lot of, I have a lot of Puerto Rican friends back home, so. Okay, very nice. Uh, if you could be an animal, what animal would you be? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, I guess a wolf. I mean, it's one of my favorite animals since I was a kid, and I mean, they're vicious, I guess. Okay. Oh, that's a good answer. Okay. That's a good answer. All right, three and out the other way. Which teammate would you most want to go through a haunted house with? <laughs> haunted house. This is a hard one. Uh, <laughs> I say Shabar. Why is that? Just because he wouldn't, he, he'd be, he'd try to fight, I guess, whatever <laughs> would try to scare him more than actually be terrified. It'd be hilarious to see. <laughs> okay, that would be great. Um, all right, if we had a UConn football version of The Voice, who would win? Uh, BJ, between BJ McBride and Angelo Pruitt. Both really yeah, good singers? Yeah, those guys are always singing in the locker room. So. Okay. Else that would be really fun. We should we should think about having them. Bring them up here. <laughs> get a show. All right. Last question. What is one thing that you want Husky fans to know about Ruben Frank? <laughs> he's wild. <laughs> he's a uh, he's a different kid, but you love him for that. He just he doesn't care what people think about him. So he's all he always does his own thing, and he doesn't he's not a quiet dude at all. Okay, that's some good qualities to have. <laughs> all right, Jesse. Good job here today. Thank you for coming on the show. We appreciate you being here. <laughs> All right, let's head back now to Mulcahy's matchup. We're back with Mulcahy's matchup with Joe D'Ambrosio. Time to break down Louisville now. They're 7-1 and one this season. They're only lost to Central Florida by just three points. And we saw them this past weekend beat South Florida right. by 31 points. What can you tell us about another tough matchup for the Huskies? Well, I think Louisville was playing great football until they ran into Central Florida. And, Emily, that's a game they led 28-7. to seven. So they were dominating that game at home. I think it was a great shock to the Cardinals that they would lose to a conference opponent. But Charlie Strong got them ready to play the next week, and they crushed South Florida at South Florida. It's a typical Louisville team. They can they can play offense with the best of them. They can run. They can pass. They have a multi-dimensional quarterback. I think the big thing that UConn's got to do with them this week is be physical. Be very physical defensively. And that threat, as you mentioned, their quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater, a name that everybody knows. His stats this season are unbelievable. He's completed 73% of his passes that he's made. How good is Teddy Bridgewater, and what can the Huskies do to slow him down? Well, I think the people in Louisville are upset, I and mean, they want to know what happened on those other 27% of the <laughs> passes. Look, he's, he's thrown for over 330 yards a game. He's had some monstrous games. Again, he's a quarterback much like Bortles and much like Brendan Kay from Cincinnati, who's a dual-threat quarterback. Though he doesn't run as much as some people think. And I think if you're UConn, what you want to do is contain him and keep him in the pocket. Again, he's got talented receivers. The running game is okay. It's not as good maybe as it's been in years gone by for Louisville. But when you throw the ball as well as they do, you only use the running game as a complement to the passing game, not the other way around. So if UConn can, uh, can keep Bridgewater under wraps, easier said than done, I think they have a chance to maybe pull an upset on, on Friday night. And Louisville's defense is giving up an average of just 10 points per game. That's a ridiculously low stat. What is so dominant about their defense? The ends are terrific. The two ends, Marcus Smith and Lorenzo Malden, have 15 sacks between them. They come from the edge, so they don't have to blitz a lot. They get such pressure off the edge that they're able to drop seven into coverage. Sometimes you know, maybe they'll bring a linebacker. It's so critical, Emily, for the tackles, for Jimmy Bennett and Kevin Friend to protect the flanks because we've seen Seeing what happens with a true freshman quarterback, he can get rattled a little bit. It happens to every true freshman quarterback, not the single Tim Boyle out. If they can keep those two defensive ends off, maybe UConn's got a little more time to throw the ball. But again, these guys are having a terrific year. And as you said, 10 points per game. We talk so much about Louisville's offense, sometimes we forget just how good that Cardinals defense is. The Huskies won last year in that three overtime game that everyone remembers, of course. And our defense put a beating on Teddy Bridgewater that I'm sure he has not forgotten. Um, we weren't expected to win that game right. either. So what do we need to do in order to put all the pieces together and make sure that we can get uh, an upset over the Cardinals? Well, first off, I think the crowd's got a little bit to do with it. I think they have to replicate the emotion of the Michigan game. We remember what Rentschler was that night and how inspired the, the players played that evening. Hopefully that scenario can take place. But the fans can't win the game. The players have to win the game. Again, you, you brought up a point. They battered Bridgewater last year. They, they hurt his wrist. They hurt his 
legs. They, he was wobbling around like a punch drunk fighter at the end of the game. And yet he still came back. I think if you get to him early, if you can hit him early, maybe in his mind he starts thinking about last year. I think ball control is critical. I think UConn has to be able to run the football. Again, that's been a problem this year. But if they want to spring the upset on Friday night, they've got to be able to run the ball, limit the amount of times that they have to put the ball in the air and put Boyle at risk against those two defensive ends. I know we're all looking forward to having a fun game on Friday night. So thanks so much for being here today, Joe. Hey, it was my pleasure to pinch it from Mulcahy again. And Bob Joyce will pitch it for me on WTIC News Talk 1080 with the play-by-play -play with Wayne and Kevin. I will be with the men's basketball team at the mm -hmm. Barclays Center with Jim Calhoun. Now, the good people at the rent are opening the gates an hour earlier. They'll be open at 6.30. They'll have the basketball game on, on the new video board there. People can come early, watch that, or you can listen to the game on your way in on WTIC and then show up for what could be a big Friday night at the rent. Lots of options for our fans. Absolutely. We like to get, well, options are a good thing. Of course. Now they will take them on um, this Friday night, November 8th. The game is at 8.30 and you can listen on WTIC or watch on ESPN2. So thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of The Blitz with Joe D'Ambrosio. I'm Emily Noonan. We'll see you out there. There.